So welcome to this hands-on demo. In this demo, we're going to go through the process of designing a computer mouse. We're going to go from our concept sketch all the way through to planning the cam toolpath for machining an injection mould to make that mouse. I'm Simon Lee, I'm an associate professor at the University of Warwick and I'm working with Ollie Briggs who's a student at the University of Warwick. As we go through the video, feel free to pause and rewind the video to examine any bits you may not pick up on as we go through. But please try and work along with the, uh, the video. First up though, we're going to look at our design concept. And we've put this concept together in Autodesk Sketchbook. Don't worry about using the sketchbook yourselves, we've provided you with the output of the sketchbook file to use as a file in Fusion. If we open to sketchbook here, you see we've got our sketch of our computer mouse. What we're looking to do with this sketch is to use our top and bottom profiles uh, as a canvas that we can then fit a form to in Fusion. So we're going to use our side view and our top view as canvases. So let's lay so let's line that up and let's save and export that out of Sketchbook. So hopping into Fusion, uh, I've created a new project for this, um, but you can do that or you can just do it in the, the default project in Fusion. We're going to upload our file that we created in Sketchbook. So you can see it there, computer mouse. This should be available for you on the, uh, the class page. We hit open and upload that into our project. And it's completed uploading. Perfect. So we've got our sketch of our computer mouse uploaded. Now we're going to look to save our Fusion file. So there's our computer mouse sketch and we're going to hit save and give our file a name. I've given it a mouse sketch so. We head up and click insert and canvas and then we should see our computer mouse image there. I'm going to hit insert and select a plane and I'm going to select this bottom plane here and you'll see our computer mouse image there. Doesn't matter what size you make at the moment, we'll deal with that in a minute. So click OK and we've inserted our computer mouse sketch. We use this one as our top-down profile view. I just close this data panel on the left, so you can see our canvas is uh, on the left-hand side. We're going to click on Edit Canvas and just move it roughly into the centre of the workspace. That right there will do. Perfect. I'm just going to go and right-click on Computer Mouse Canvas again and click Calibrate, and this is so we can resize our canvas to the correct size. We click on two points in our image and click there and there and we've got our dimension there 64 and we can type that in and it will resize our canvas appropriately. Perfect. Let's select insert canvas again and we can take another copy of our computer mouse sketch and this time we're going to put it on this plane here. Again we're going to resize it roughly uh, we'll deal with the calibration of it afterwards. I'm going to hit horizontal flip as well because it's brought it in the wrong orientation. So give it a roughly, give it the approximate size, and roughly line it up. Just drop it down there so our computer mouse is sitting on our base plane where our sketch is there. Have a look around, and that looks okay. Click OK. And we're going to head over then and calibrate our second canvas to get the right size. So right click and calibrate. Let's take a look at this front view and again go and select two points. That one and that one. And type in our dimension of 36. We're pretty close there actually. Excellent. So that's now our two canvases brought in and sat over the top of each other to give us our side and top view. Let's have a little quick look round, make sure they're lined up with each other. Um, I think this side view is a little bit off, so we might need to move it around. 
see that at the front it's it's a little bit too far forward so yep right click and edit canvas and we're just going to drop it back a little bit um let's move it too much is that about right that looks okay That looks great. So hit OK. And we've got our two canvases lined up. Obviously I've gone through that quite quickly. Feel free to pause the video and spend a bit of time getting your canvases lined up on your copy. I'm going to quickly touch on collaboration in Fusion 360. Don't worry about doing this on your copy. Uh, this is purely to show you that this feature is available in Fusion 360. So I'm essentially going to save my file and pass it over to Ollie who's going to do the next section. If we go to the top left hand corner and open our data panel we can click on the people tab and I'm going to type Ollie's email address in there and add him into the project so he can work on the file now I've finished lining up the canvases. So I'll type in Ollie's email address and I'm going to hit invite and that should send him an invite to work on the project. Right, over to you, Ollie. Thanks, Simon. Now I've got the file, take a look at what we've got. Perfect. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a pattern for this mold. So, what that effectively means is we're going to model our mass. We're going to do this in the form workspace. So, the first thing we're going to do, after creating that data panel, is create a form. I also bring up the form menu, and here we're going to create a box on the top plane surface. Look at it from the top, and from the centre I'm going to draw a box that's roughly the right size for the mouse. It doesn't have to be exact, so don't worry about it, because we're going to manipulate this in a little bit. That did looks like roughly a good size, looking at it from all the angles, so I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to model this and shape this into the shape that we'd like. Now the first thing we need to do is because, as you can see from our canvas and our sketch, our mouse is actually symmetric down this centre line here. So what we're going to do is we're going to reflect that in our model and we can use the symmetry tool. We're going to click on the icon at the top to mirror internal symmetry and we can click on the two faces either side of the symmetry line that we'd like. And you can see this green line that indicates that there's now symmetry between these two sides. Click OK. And what that means is that anything we do to this side will be reflected automatically on the other side. So it saves us a lot of effort in trying to get this right. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to flatten this bottom part or crease it specifically. We know that our mouse is going to sit on a table, so those bottom edges need to be a little bit sharper than the rest. To do this, we can go to Modify, Increase, and what this does is it takes any edges that are rounded, that's typically standard in the form workspace, and it puts a sharp corner into them. So, you know, if you on all these bottom edges, you'll see that as I do it, the other side will reflect as well, because it's symmetrized. And we have these sharp edges on the bottom there. Click OK, and you see how the shape has changed to have these lovely sharp corners. So now we've done this, we're going to try and model our mouse into the shape that we'd like. I'm going to start on the side. You can just about see this canvas here, which is what we're going to try and model it to. Now to do this, we're going to be using the Modify Edit Form tool. It's actually the icon at the top, you can click Edit Form. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to click on either a face, a point, or an edge to move it into the position you'd like and adjust the shape. We're going to use edges in this example. You can click on an edge and you have your typical 3D movement options. I'm going to use this square which allows me to move it in this plane that we're looking at. It allows me to manipulate the shape as you can see. And don't forget this is being, this is being mirrored on the other side because it's symmetry. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go across and we're going to select these outside edges 
and we're going to try and fit it to this side profile shape. And you might see that you're not going to quite get it on the first try, so it's a little bit of back and forth trying to get each of the edges that you want into the rough shape that you like. And sometimes you have to go back to an edge, I've already done this one, but I'm going to go back. And you just keep manipulating it until you have the exact shape that you like and you're happy with it. You can spend as much time as you'd like on this. Uh, you can either be very quick or you can spend a lot of time getting it exactly right. It's really up to you. Uh, I'm going to try and get it right but not take up too much time. You can also move the faces if you like. It moves a little bit more. I tend to prefer the edges. It gives you a little bit more control on some of these corners, especially down at the bottom here. But it's really up to your personal preference. Down a little bit. I think I'm pretty happy with that side profile shape. Bring this side down a little bit more. I think that's looking pretty good. And you can use shift in your middle mouse button just to move around and hold it and take a look. I think that side profile is looking pretty good. But obviously, the rest of the profiles aren't quite ideal, so we're just going to do the exact same thing on the top. So looking at our top profile, you can shift away to cancel and then you have selected. You want to move these corners in a little bit and the same at the back a little bit. So you might want to check because obviously when you're in the top profile you can't see all your edges. We actually want to move both this edge and this edge. And you can press shift tick to select multiple edges at once. And then you can use these controls to drag them in. So I'm going to go back to my top view and just drag them and see the shape a little bit with the canvas. I'll match it to our canvas where we can. I'm going to do the same for the back. Select this bottom one. Don't forget, because in the top view, you can't really see that, so just make sure that you orbit around and take a look. Select those two corner faces, or oh, sorry, corner edges, apologies. And we're just going to drag them into the shape that we'd like. You can also select one of these middle edges. Uh, you don't need to worry about the symmetry on this one. Just to drag it back a little bit, make it a little bit more rounded. So. Shape's starting to come together. Uh, these are the two profiles that we have from our from our canvas. I just drag the center in slightly, just to match. But we need to be careful because don't forget this is being molded. So if we have too much of a profile going down, then the draft angles won't work. I'll just drag that in a little bit there. And actually, the next thing we need to do, we don't have a canvas for it. If you look at it from the front or back, it's very square down the sides. So I'm actually just going to select all of these top edges here. And just drag them out a little bit. Take a look from the front to see what looks like a mouse shape. So that's looking pretty good there. You might find it easier just to turn off your canvases or to hide them. And just so you can see what you're doing a little bit more. And if you really want a little bit more control, I haven't done it in this case, but you could go modify, or insert edge and subdivide, and it will give you a few more lines that you can make it. I haven't done it this time, but you could do that if you really wanted to get it exactly right. I think our mouse is looking like a pretty good shape. But just to check on the bottom, I want to make sure this is exactly flat. Although we creased it, this doesn't necessarily mean that our bottom face is completely straight. So what we're going to do, we're going to use the flatten tool from modify and find it probably down near the bottom. And flatten this allows you to select multiple points along a plane, including the middle one, don't forget that. And now we have all these points selected. We can select select plane, it'll probably be automatically on fit, select plane. Then we actually want it to be we model this on the Origin XY plane. If I click on that, you probably notice there at the bottom right down. And what that does is all these points now sit on that plane, and that makes sure that this bottom surface is completely flat. So for our mouse, once it would be completely made, it would allow it to sit flat without wobbling on the table. Click OK. And I'm pretty happy with the shape. I think it's looking pretty good. Um, 
as I said, you can spend as much time as you like manipulating it, changing it, adjusting it how you like. But I think I'm, I'm pretty happy. Now that we have our body, we need to do a draft analysis just to make sure that all the parts we have can be modelled and moulded in the injection moulding machine. And then also just to find out where this top case should start to finish. So at the moment, we have these very obvious overhangs at the bottom here that we need to avoid. And this mouse is typically made of two parts. There's a split down the middle, and the top part is molded, and the second part is molded separately. So we're going to finish the form, go back into the normal design workspace. We're going to inspect and draft analysis. Now here it gives us draft angles that we can change. Now two degrees to two degrees, that's roughly right for about uh, for getting a mold out. So I'm going to keep them apart, and then for the direction of molding. Or the direction of draft on this axis going straight up. Because we're going to mold it like so, so we're going to have this part the top and bottom. You can quite clearly see where the overhangs lie. And we have strong overhangs in the blue sections, and then the red sections are a little bit straight. So here on the blue sections, your mold wouldn't be able to come out at all. Because there's an overhang on the red sections, the angle's slightly too tight, and you probably wouldn't be able to get it out of the mould properly or easily. We're going to try and avoid all of that, and what we're going to do is we're going to split our body straight across that line. So we're going to construct a plane. Now this is just an offset plane, which is the icon on the top. You also get to an offset plane here, and we're going to select our X Y plane here and just move it up slightly. Take a look at it from the back or from the front and just about see where the line is. So we to bring this down to roughly where as close as we can to this line. So about seven millimeters look good. Take a look at it from the other angles. That works. It should be symmetrical on this side, so that's not a problem. And at the back, all of our overhangs are below that line. So I'm going to press OK. And we're going to split our mouse body into two pieces. So to do this, we're going to use the split body tool. Find this in modify, click on our body, and select the plane we want to use to split it. You can hold down on the left click button to find something that's behind something else. So here I've left clicked, hold it down, and I'm going to select plane one. And you can see the splitting circle comes up. You can see exactly where it's going to split. Us. And again, you can just double check that's above all of the overhang points of interest. Click OK, and you'll now see in your browser that you have two separate bodies one for the top, that one, and one for the bottom. I'm just going to rename these by clicking on them. And this is base, and this is I'm going to hide the base now and I'll focus on the top section. And just to make sure, I'm triple double check and do another inspect draft analysis on this part. And it should all be green. Looking good. You can turn off an analysis in the browser, either turn them all off, or you can turn them off individually. Now that we have our pot, we're not going to be modelling it solidly. There's going to be electronics that need to go in there, and we're not going to model those. But for the moulding, this needs to be hollow. So we're going to use the shell tool. And now we're going to modify, select this top face, and we're going to make our walls a thickness of, let's say, 2 millimetres. Type in 2, press Enter, and you'll see that it shells out. So now this wall is a uniform thickness all along. Two millimeters. I'm just going to turn off this plane here within construction so it's out of our way. You can see we now have this hollow shape of roughly what we want to mold. So it's looking about right. The last thing I need to do is add a slot in the middle where the mouse wheel will go. Obviously, when this is molded, I'm going to try and incorporate this into the mold rather than cutting it out later. To do this, we want to try and draw a sketch on the Front surface here, and then 
cut the hole through. The best way I've found to do this is I'm going to bring back that plane and, and back the origin. And I'm going to create a plane at an angle so that if we look at it from the side, we have a sketch at an angle of roughly what we want to cut out. If we were to do it on our top plane here, looking down, then the walls would have incorrect angles and cause problems. So I'm going to go construct plane at angle, and I want to select the axis through which the, the plane is going to rotate. So in this case, I want it to rotate through this angle. So that when we rotate it, we look at it from the side, and just have a gauge of roughly what the right angle is. With the slot being roughly in the middle of the slide here, let's say. So looking at it, I'd say, one of those, so I'm going to go with that one. Click OK. Now, unfortunately, our plane is down here, so I'm just going to use an offset plane. So just drag it up. Just in front of our mouse, so it's a little bit easier to see when we draw the sketch. We turn those first two planes off and the iron if we want to. We have this plane on the top now. I'm going to create a sketch. Yeah. You'll notice that the sketch origin is based on the origin of the plane itself, which is not actually in the middle of our mouse, even though our normal origin is. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mark where our normal origin is, where right the middle of the mouse is. I'm going to go project. And we're going to click on just the center of the axis of the origin here. And this will project, you can just see a purple dot of where perpendicular to our plane origin sits. That's all we need to do. So we click that there, and we now have a point on our sketch plane that is in the center of our mouse. If you want to look directly at your sketch, obviously the view key is not going to be much here. So you can use the look at tool at the bottom to look at it. Bring our plane back and say, look at this plane. I'm going to draw a construction line down the centre, so we know exactly where our centre is. You can see that the horizontal constraint, or the horizontal and vertical constraint, has been applied here, so you know this is straight down. You could also apply it nice to use the origin card you wanted. And we're going to draw a slot for our mouse wheel. So we're going to create a slot. I'm going to use a centre to centre slot. And our slot is going to be 15 millimeters long. And if you zoom in, we're six millimeters across. And that's the diameter of the ends and not the radius. I've accidentally left construction on here, so I'm just going to select all of our lines and just turn off construction in the sketching pad on the right hand side. You can see we now have an area that's roughly parallel with our part at that place. And all that remains to do is to finish our sketch and extrude that area through. We could just drag it through. I'm just going to select all so that it cuts through everything that's shown. Make sure it's cut and click OK. It's looking good. The location is roughly right. I don't have the electronics for hand, so I don't know exactly where this slot should be, but if you do find out, you want to go back, edit sketch, add a dimension in between the slot and the origin. The last thing to do is just to double check it for moulding. Now you might notice, you know, you might think, well hang on, when you're moulding this hole in the middle is not going to work, and you're quite right. You have to inspect, draft analysis. You can see, oh, I can actually use the previous analysis card, you can see but there's the red areas and these blue areas where there's this overhang. Because we're going to try and mould it like so, these overhangs on the sides don't quite work. So, what we're going to do is we're going to add a chamfer onto either sides just so that the angle, vertical angle, is always open. So, I'm going to modify chamfer, do the inside first, select the inside edge. Just bring it in slightly. Let's go with one millimeter. And you can see that it's all now blue, 
which is what we want. Because if we look at it on the vertical, then this angle here is open by 90 degrees and opens up to vertical movement. Still have a problem on the bottom rim, so I'm actually going to add a chamfer on the outside as well. Here's what you want anyway. Make sure it fits. I'm going to add that in. Another one that just says one minute either side. And that's all gone green. So now we have no red areas that aren't red to Now I'm pretty happy with this. It's looking like a mouse shape. I've we'll swapped the mouse wheel, and our bottom is nice and flat for where we would sit on the base. At this point, I'm going to hand it back to Simon. So what I'm going to do is save. And say, pattern created. Click OK. And this will upload it to the cloud for Simon to continue, create them all, do some things. Handing it back to you, Simon. Perfect. Thanks, Ollie. So now we're going to go through a few more steps to finish off uh, our mouse. We're going to look at quickly at uh, rendering our mouse, so to get some visuals of our mouse. And then we're going to look at the ways in which we might manufacture um, a quick prototype and also then to manufacture the injection mold for our mouse. So that's our file back from Ollie. He's done a great job there at modelling up the top part of our mouse. I'm going to turn the canvas at our top view back on. And you see we've got these uh, dark patches on the side of our mouse uh, from our concept that we're just going to add in to our body that we've got. So we're going to do that by creating a new sketch, then using that sketch to then split the faces of our body. So we create a new sketch on the bottom there. And we're going to use a spline to define our dark areas there of our sketch. So I click and just roughly follow the line round to pick up on the front. And you'll see there we can't attach to that front uh, portion of the surface. So what we're going to have to do is click on P for project and we've projected through that face. So we do a new spline and now we'll be able to finish off our spline at that point on our top face. Double, double click which finishes our spline. We're then going to mirror our spline across the center of our mouse. And click OK. And now we've got a spline on each side. So we can use our two new splines to essentially split the face of our top body. So we click on split face under modify. And we're going to select our face and our splitting tool as the spline we've created. Click OK and you see we've got that patch there now. And our sketch is turned off so we're going to come over to the left hand side and turn our sketch back on and do the same on the other side of our mouse. So split face click on our face and click OK. You might want to pause here and just uh, experiment with those splines. It can take a little bit of practice to get them right so they look exactly as it does in the sketch. Once you're happy with those and you've split that face, we could move on to the next step. So the base of our mouse is currently turned off. Uh, let's go and turn that back on. So the bodies and turn that on. I'm also going to turn off the draft analysis that Ollie used in the last step as well. So click on draft analysis and turn those off. Perfect. I'm going to turn all our sketches off. Have a look around. Mouse is looking great. So in the next step, we're going to drop some appearances on the mouse to see what it looks like. So put it over there. You can find the appearances under the modify menu or hit A on the keyboard and it'll pop up. So I've just hit A there and it's come up. Or under the modify menu, you'll see appearance. That opens this menu. Uh, let's find a couple of plastics we can drop on the model. 
let's have a look. Um, yep, we'll drop uh, a matte grey on the base. Uh, we're going to drop on the top. We're going to select faces under appearance to so just drop it onto these two side pieces. Let's rotate round. Do the same again to the side piece. Perfect. And take a glossy white plastic and drop it onto the top body. I'm going to keep the appearances I've applied to the side pieces. Um, almost lost that one there. Let's sort that one out. So hit faces again and drop our plastic matte ground to the side. Fantastic. It's nice to look something very similar to what we had in our initial concept. I think I want to go back in and make that grey a little bit darker. So I'll double click on that and drag that down to make that matte grey a little bit darker and boost the roughness a little bit. Do the same with the white, make that a little bit darker. You can also access this menu by right clicking and clicking edit on the materials and bump up the roughness there. Hit done, close that menu. That's starting to look excellent. So we're going to drop now into the rendering workspace and do a quick bit of rendering on our design. So we're going to click up top left hand corner and click on render. Uh, we're going to turn off our origin axes. I'm going to see our design there, have a look around it. We're going to click up top there on the green arrow for in canvas render. Once we've done that, it will start ray tracing. It's going to take a couple of minutes to complete our in canvas render. So that's our render uh, finished. You see down there on the right hand side it actually took 56 seconds to get to excellent level. You can also do uh, cloud rendering. So if you hit on there you'll see all the options to do cloud rendering with your cloud credits. I'm not going to do that this time. We're going to stop our in canvas render and we're going to drop back into our design workspace. We're going to take a quick look at a couple of ways we could manufacture our design. First up, we're going to have a look at maybe how we would go about 3D printing a prototype of our mouse. And we're going to look at how we would then create a mould that we can CNC for injection moulding. So first up, 3D printing a prototype. We're going to head up and change to our manufacture workspace. We're going to click on additive at the top there and create a new setup. And first up we're going to select an additive operation and select a machine. Uh, I've already got one in here. Um, don't worry necessarily about yours. I'm just going to show you this part rather than you have to follow along. I'm going to select the body I want to print. I'm going to turn off the base of our mouse because we don't want to print that in this operation. And that's our mouse. I'm going to change orientation because I want to print it end on to get a good surface finish. I'm going to change that handle there and change the orientation to get it standing upright. And click on OK. I'm going to make sure that part is sitting on the build platform. Perfect. I'm going to generate the toolpaths for it. You'll see, click on the left hand side, this toolpath is generating. You see the counter there next to additive toolpath. Now, our toolpath is generated. We have a look at a simulation of our toolpath. We can drag that up there and see all the layers of our mouse as they'll be built up in the 3D printer. Have a look around, and you see it's generated support there for the back of the overhangs. So we can close that and we can take a quick look at what it would look like in the printer if we were looking to print it. There's also a lot more to the additive uh, tools than Fusion. Uh, I just want to show you that they were there really than uh, get you to follow along particularly for this section. Please feel free to have a look at them in more detail when you get a chance. So we're going to go back into our design workspace and now we're going to look at trying to create a mould for injection moulding this mouse. So we'll take a look around. We're we'll gonna take a look underneath and we'll create a new sketch on this bottom face of the mouse. And zoom out 
I'm going to do a center point rectangle and click on our center there. I'm going to make it about 80 millimeters by 140. So I'm going to type into the boxes to set our rectangle there. Perfect. I'm going to click finish sketch. I'm going to use that then to extrude up a solid body. So I'm going to select that profile, that one and that one. I'm going to look at side on and I'm going to drag that up probably about 40 millimeters. I want to change it to a new body rather than a custom operation. Click OK. And now we've got our new block that represents our injection mold and our top case of our mouse sitting in it. We're going to modify and click combine. We're going to select our block. We're going to select our mouse top body as our tool. Make sure you hit keep tools here. So we're going to cut our mouse away, but make sure we keep our mouse. So that gives us our new body of our injection mold. We can hide our top of our mouse. And we see we've still got this two parts of our injection mold. We're going to do a section analysis through the center of our mold. And you can see the bit where we've got our hole for our roller in our mouse is still connecting these two parts of our injection mold. So we need to separate those. So we're going to create a new sketch on the same plane as our section analysis. We're going to hit P for project to project that point. And we select there as well. Sorry, it may not look the same on your copy, uh, but that's what you're looking to do. Is you're looking to get a parting line where we can separate these two halves of our injection mould. Click on the end there, the spline, and generate that line there, which we're going to use to split these two halves of our mould. So I'm going to finish the sketch. We could use split body, but what we're actually going to do here is generate a surface to use that as our splitting tool. So we go to our surface tools and we create a surface by extruding it from our spline. We drag it out there. You can see it we're creating the small surface in there. I'm going to hit symmetric to bring it out the other side and click OK. You can see we've got that surface in there. We're going to use that to split our mould. So I'm going to hit modify and split body going to choose our mould and our splitting tool there is actually going to be this little surface we've created. Hit OK. And you see we've got this extra body, body 5 that's appeared as well. So that's the internal part of our injection mould. Still got the section analysis on there. Let's turn that off. And then we've got our top case of our mouse. Let's spin that round and we've got our two halves of our injection mould. Obviously we're missing some detail if we were to make this into a proper injection mould. This is just to show you the process at this point. And that's our main bit of our injection mould there. And you see nicely how the top part of our mouse sits in that mould. Right, so now we're going to have a go at trying to machine this mould. Let's have a quick tidy up of our sketches. Close those up and close the bodies up. Right, so we're going to head over and go into the manufacturer workspace. We've still got our original setup from when we tried to 3D print it. So we're just going to right click and delete that for now. So we need to do a new setup for our CNC machining. So we're going to click on milling and new setup. That's our mould on a machine, so we have to create a new bit of stock. I'm going to select our model, which is that one there. Drag that into the centre. Right, 
So now we need to select our stock. We're going to head up and select our stock. And we're going to choose a fixed box, star, fixed box size to the billet we've got. We're going to assume all our billet is squared up and the right size to start with. We're going to select our stock corner origin point. The thing we have to do then is select our work axes, our work orientation. So we're going to select that option there and we can define all our work axes. So I'm going to click on that as the z-axis and now I'm going to flip that so it's pointing upwards. I'm going to choose our x-axis which is that one there. Perfect. And now I need to go and select our work coordinate system in this bottom left hand corner here. That's everything set up. So we've got our X and Y defined and our Z defined. So our setup is complete. As I say, we're assuming that our billet is the right size and it's all squared up nicely. So then our toolpaths are essentially designed then to take our stock out at the middle there of our billet. So I'm going to choose adaptive clearing first. I'm going to select a tool. Uh, if you choose the sample tools in metric there and we're looking for a select by type there scroll to find the right one we're looking for a bullnose end mill a uh, fairly large one to start with just to rough out some of the stock from the middle uh, let's choose a 20 millimeter bullnose end mill click on ok we select our geometry, so we can select this line at the top. We're going to just drop our optimal load down. Don't worry too much about that at the moment. Uh, when you get into your machining, you're able to play around with the settings to your heart's content. And you'll see it's generating a toolpath here on the left hand side. So that's our first toolpath to rough out some of the stock. We're going to create a second toolpath. We're going to choose parallel. Going to choose a new tool here. I'm going to select, uh, and we're going to look for a sample tool there, and we choose a ball end mill. Uh, something not too big. Um, let's go for that 12 mil. Click OK. Again, select our geometry. Just go in and drop down our step over as well. So this is. A step over in the machining passes. That's still probably a bit coarse, but you'll be able to get the idea. And it'll start generating the toolpath there for our parallel toolpath. So that's our two toolpaths. So if we click on setup and click on actions and simulate, we can simulate our machining toolpaths by pressing this play button down the bottom. Uh, you can use this slider along the bottom to change your speed and as I was just shown there you can click on that stock button to show you your stock there if it's not displayed on your screen. So we'll speed up a little bit through this step. You can see there our tool is stepping down and removing material. This is just two toolpaths to get you started. Uh, to finish this you'd have to do quite a fine step over finishing toolpath with a ball end mill. So this is our second one with our ball mill. So it's still quite coarse at the moment. You need to do a high step over. Turn our toolpath off. You can see we've got our machined mould there. So that's pretty much it. Say so if you want to do this uh, to get a final mould, you'd have to do a much finer toolpath. But that just really shows you the process of going through to create our toolpaths. So, finish inspecting the mould there. If we want to export this then to run on our CNC machine, close that and we can right click on setup here and select to post process and this would then post process it for our CNC machine. I'm not going to go into that at this stage. Go back into our design workspace. I'm going to see our mould. So that's been a brief tour through the process of uh, designing a product from the concept 
through to a finished tool, all within Fusion 360, all within the product, not leaving Fusion 360 as an environment. So thanks for dropping in for this fairly whistle-stop tour of Fusion 360. Thanks for your attention. If you've got any questions, we'll hopefully be able to answer them in the Q&A session.